um, a video on the history of um, rock and roll radio uh, from about 1960, uh, early 60s to the mid 80s. But in order to do that, I need to do one video first so you understand part of what I'm talking about. Um, that video is on Motown. And that's how I'm going to explain now. Um, I'll, I have notes, so um, I'll be looking down on my notes periodically. Um, early part of the 20th century, black artists, black um, musicians, were involved in a variety of, uh, they, they played and wrote music for a, a variety of genres, um, gospel, rhythm and blues, soul, blues, jazz, that sort of thing. But for the most part, their music was not heard by um, white Americans because it was relegated to the far ends of the radio spectrum. Um, you had to go way down or way on the other side to listen to it. Um, various reasons for that prejudice, but I, but I do have to say that um, um, like most books, uh, the biggest critics of, of books are usually people who've never read them. And uh, I think that was true of this kind of music. It was called race music. And uh, again, it was various genres, but it's called race music. And uh, I think the people who were offended by it or didn't want to listen to it or whatever, were people who had never heard it. Uh, towards the end of the 1950s, something called Top Radio, Top 40 Radio took over. And uh, it was aimed at kids. And kids didn't really care who played the music or who wrote it. They just wanted it to sound good. And R&B, soul, you know, blues, music, did sound good sounded good to these kids. So, um, towards the end of the 50s, you started hearing black music more on, uh, on the radios uh, of the time because of Top 40. Now, let me step to the side a minute. You may have heard of a word called Motown. Motown is short for Motortown which is a word that describes Detroit, Michigan in the United States. It's called that because uh, at one point most of the manufacturing for automobiles took place in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but Motown is also a sound of music, a type of music. Um, and it's called that because it originated in Detroit. Um, now, uh, its roots are in jazz, gospel, it's black music, it was primarily, um, jazz, gospel, uh, R&B, blues, jazz, all that. Um, and here's how Motown became a sound. Uh, in 1959, um, a moderately successful um, songwriter named Barry Gordy uh, lived in Detroit, and uh, he borrowed some money and founded a um, founded a company. Uh, it was a record label. He wanted to found a record label. And uh, he called it Motown. He bought a building, bought a house, and it had a photographic studio out the back, and he, he turned it into a dirt floor, and he turned it into a music studio. Now, at the time, there were a bunch of uh, black musicians who played the jazz clubs in Detroit, and he recruited a bunch of these guys to be session musicians at this Motown place. Okay, so get the picture. All right. Um, 
Now these guys were they were veteran musicians. They played the jazz clubs. They were they were talented guys. Um, for the most part, they're all black. There's a few white guys, but mostly they're black musicians. And um, so he, after he turned the um, the house that he bought into a music studio and recruited these guys, they played on almost every record that Motown, the record label, put out, or the company put out. Um, they uh, they called themselves the Funk Brothers. Now, they weren't brothers, they just called themselves that. And um, to give you an idea of how successful these guys were, they played on more number one albums, more number one songs than the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, um, the Beach Boys and Elvis Presley combined. Okay? Let that sink in. Um, so, here's kind of how it would go. Someone like Smokey Robinson would show up at the studio and he'd have a riff or he'd have an idea for a song. And he'd come in and he'd play it for the musicians in the studio the studio musicians. Well, I mean, they play together all the time. They played in the jazz clubs, they played, they were studio musicians in the daytime jazz clubs at night, okay? These guys, you know, they were good. So what happens is, Smokey comes in with a riff or something, he plays it for them, these guys look at each other and they go, well, how about this? You know, and they, they play, a riff and then another one comes in and another one comes in and and all of a sudden you have a song okay and this is not 50 takes later this is one or two takes and you got a song okay that's how good these guys were um, I mean they were they were they were phenomenal and and, and they were the backing band of all kinds of acts that you've heard of. Um, and if you haven't heard of the Funk, Funk Brothers, it's no wonder because they didn't get a lot of credit. Um, but they were integral to the Motown sound. Um, they would turn an idea into a full-fledged piece of music and it often was a hit. Um, they were they were legends, legends. Um, the influence of the Motown sound coming out of the studio um, it lives on today in a variety of other genres of music. Um, it's influenced rock and roll. It's influenced hip hop. It's influenced country music. Any genre you can name, Motown has had an influence on it. Um, unfortunately, um, <laughs> humans being humans, uh, Barry Gordy decided uh, in 1972 to mess with what works and he moved Motown to Los Angeles. Unfortunately, the Funk Brothers had families and stuff in Detroit, and for the most part, that's where they stayed. So, you know, and at that point, they continued to play in the jazz clubs in Detroit. But Motown, because for a variety of reasons, uh, and, and most particular since it left the Funk Brothers behind, uh, from 1972 on, the influence of Motown waned, and so did its prof profitability. Um, so, uh, that was kind of the end of Motown, but the influence of Motown was profound. Um, 
And if you're at all curious, you've even if you don't know what Motown is, or you think you've never heard the songs, you have. Even if you're a teenager today, you've heard those songs. You may not recognize them as Motown. You may not even recognize them. Uh, you probably won't know if the Funk Brothers played on them because the songs were issued under other artists' names. The Funk Brothers are just the backing band. But um, I guarantee you that you've heard some of these songs. Um, you've either heard them in the soundtrack to movies, um, they're played as jingles, they're played as, uh, they're played on advertisements for other products, uh, you name it. Other artists still cover those tunes today. Um, so it, it's pretty impressive, pretty impressive group of guys. Um, if you want to know more about the Motown sound and and how it evolved, um, uh, let me recommend this movie. Uh, it's called Standing in the Shadows of Motown. Uh, it's a DVD. There's two, two DVDs in here. And uh, it's got interviews. Um, it, it's worth the price of, of admission just for the soundtrack. Um, you know, it tells the whole story of Motown and how it came to be and how it ended. And uh, it, it's really a, a tremendous, it's very entertaining. Um, the music's great, obviously. And um, it's well worth it. So if you get a chance, go for it. Okay? So, that's it on Motown. Thanks.